Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Praetorian, and welcome back to Strategic Mine, the Pacific. All right, so today we're going to be doing the Battle of Guadalcanal. Uh, we're going to need to prepare our units for battle, uh, our army. Uh, before we do, though, let's go ahead and start by spending our victory points. Uh, so the last time we got the training program, that's pretty much all our points, so we weren't really able to get anything else, and that was, again, the one that made it so that all of our units uh, start with level 1. Now we could go ahead and spend 300 victory points to get them so they all start at level 2. Now we saw how useful that is to have those upgrades and stuff, but however, there's some other stuff I want to get here, guys, so we're not going to get that. Uh, we're going to start with the airstrike uh, for 250 victory points. Uh, this will allow us to do, what well, you can see here in the little uh, picture, allows us to do airstrikes in three, uh, uh, three hexes. Uh, so let's go ahead and learn that. And then that will leave us with 225 points. And I would like to get the radar program. Uh, this is a passive that allows our aviation recon. Uh, you know, where we use that HQ skill, uh, that recon skill. And that'll allow them to detect submarines. As of right now, the only way for us to detect submarines is with the destroyer's sonar. So I feel that this would be pretty useful to have. And we use that skill all the time. Uh, so yeah, locating submarines I think would be uh, useful. Because if this is anything like history, I do expect there to be some Japanese submarines. I don't think we had any in the past battles, uh, but I'd expect there to be some in this one. So we, we got all our units here. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with messing around with these first, uh, like uh, leveling these guys up. So you notice that the Marine here, uh, this is the one that we got uh, from the, you know, saving the Dutch Bay. This one starts at level three experience. So that's really nice. That's gonna allow them us to give them a ton of uh, upgrades here. So let's go ahead and start by giving them, uh, just trying to make them really good at attack. Uh, so we'll give them the Swift Strike. Veteran of the Trenches and Night Hunter. Uh, knights are, I think, like every third turn or something, so I think that'll be useful to have. Uh, the Fighter, the Link to Fight Fighter, uh, has an upgrade. We're going to get them the Boom and Zoom. And then we have the Avenger, uh, who also has an upgrade here, and we're going to give them the Tactical Retreat. All right. Uh, also, you notice that they have uh, the ability to upgrade to the new Avengers, which will increase their naval attack and their air defense, and that's exactly what we're going to do. It's going to be 30 prestige. That's not too bad. All right, so let's go to acquire some units. So we could get another Colorado-class battleship, and, man, it would be super. You saw how useful. You guys seen how useful the battleships are. They're incredibly powerful. But that would be, like, all of our prestige, and there's so much stuff that we need to get for this battle that I feel like that would probably be irresponsible, so we're not going to get that. Uh, instead, we're going to get a carrier. Uh, we're really limited on the number, number of planes we can have with only four, so let's go to get... We're going to get a, a Yorktown. Could have got one of these last uh, last battle, but, yeah, I want I want another Yorktown. So we're going to acquire that. Now, you notice that we now are uh, kind of short on points. However, what we could do, because we can now have seven planes, and there's no way that we're going to be able to get seven planes... Uh, or, you know, get three more planes. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the old Yorktown that we have and remove the enlarged hangar. You get all of your prestige back when it comes to the equipment. So the 500 prestige that we, we paid to, to acquire that, we get it right back. Uh, and we can always add it later if we need to. And now we have uh, still plenty of uh, slots open for planes. And we'll probably only be able to buy one plane uh, for this one. Uh, and that's going to have to be... It's going to have to be a Dauntless, guys. Well, Avenger is more useful in the naval situation. Uh, this is the Battle of Guadalcanal. That means that we are going to be doing some invasions. There's going to be land battles uh, this time. So, therefore, uh, the Dauntless uh, can be used against both air and, or excuse me, against both naval and land targets. So, I think the Dauntless would be a, a better option for this one. So, we're going to get the new one, the new Dauntless. And then we're also going to need to acquire some ground units. Uh, so, we have one Marine unit. And I'm assuming that we're going to get some auxiliary, like, non-core land units, because there's just no way you'd have enough prestige to get, like, a, a suitable army. I haven't done this battle yet, guys, so I don't really know what they're going to give us, so we're just kind of winging it. Uh, so hopefully they give us some decent units, but I always find that I need more artillery, so we will acquire artillery. Uh, recon is incredibly useful to have in this game, so we're going to get a recon unit, because I don't know if they're going to give us any. And then we're going to get another marine unit, and I'm just going to hope that that's enough, guys. Because, yeah, I need that prestige for other things. I don't know. Is that the hope? I would love to get ourselves a tank, uh, a, a steward. But given that we don't have that one passive skill with it, that you buy with your victory points that allows you to, like, uh, deploy the tanks, you know, anywhere on the beach rather than having to go through a port, I don't know how useful uh, the tank would be because we already have these guys that I think have to deploy uh, through ports. Uh, so we don't need another unit. 
that can't be deployed on a beach. Uh, not yet. We can always get a tank later. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, upgrade these guys. Uh, upgrade them. Excuse me, level them up is what I meant to say. Uh, so the uh, recon, we're going to get the forward observer. Again, that would be really useful to have it. And this also affects artillery. So our artillery unit will get a bonus from it. Uh, if the recon unit has scouted them out. The artillery unit, this is going to be a little bit trickier to pick, but I think what we're going to go for is the defender so that they can support more. Uh, those are the defensive support that they give when somebody attacks a unit within range of your artillery that lets them do it three times rather than just the uh, default one time. So this marine unit, what do we have for this one? This marine unit is going to go with veteran of trenches. That's just a really good one to have because uh, it does re result in you being able to trench every turn even if you use all of your movement points and then they do it faster and they uh, instead of one level per turn they entrench by two levels and they cannot be reduced by two levels by enemy attack. All right, last thing that needs to be leveled up is our dauntless. Now our other dauntless does not have the all weather ability so we want to make sure that one of our bombers can attack. Uh, yeah uh, we're gonna have to any non-core uh, planes that we get we'll probably have to go all weather too. I don't want to be like completely unable to do anything when it rains. We didn't do the Yorktown. I forgot that one uh, which we're probably just gonna do overwatch here. I really like the Overwatch. All right, so everybody's leveled up, and so now we still have a thousand points. Uh, I would absolutely love to be able to get a destroyer, guys. I feel like having another destroyer would be really helpful, and it's a thousand prestige. But again, just too much stuff to do because uh, I mentioned this last episode. We're gonna do some overpowering, overstrengthening of our units, where you uh, give them extra HP. Now we can't do it with ships. You'll notice it says here cannot change naval units. You can only do it with the land units and the planes. And essentially what this is, is you're giving them extra health based on their experience level. So this guy has three stars, so we can put him up by three points. So that's exactly what we're going to do. This is more useful for uh, planes. We definitely want to tick apart planes, especially the fighters. I'll uh, probably tick up all the planes, in fact. Give them that extra HP. All right. Oh, this one can go up too. That's right. Hmm. All right. So I don't... Yeah, I think we already did that. Okay, so that's fine. So we can do the artillery now. We'll do that. We're not going to do the recon unit, though. No, we're not going to do the recon. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so let's go and get some equipment for these units. So I'd like to get the armor-piercing shells for the Colorado class. Let's go ahead and get that. Uh, let's see what else we want to get here. Uh, I want the depth charge projectors. Again, I would assume that there is going to be... Uh, Japanese submarines. These depth charge projectors, uh, projectors they uh, one, increase your naval attack when you're using the depth charges, so you get to destroy the submarines quicker, and two, they give you a plus one gun range, uh, where you, you have that issue where you move your destroyer and then you've used all their movement points, and then you use your sonar, and then it reveals that the, that the submarine is, you know, uh, you know, two hexes away, you know, not right next to you, I mean, uh, so I guess it'd be technically like one hex away. And then you can't attack them uh, with with any with your depth charges. You can only attack them with your torpedoes. Uh, so yeah, having this I think would be really useful. So we're gonna get it for both of them. Uh, we're not gonna make any uh, improvements with our submarines. Let's take a look and see what else we can get here. So I really want to make the marine unit as good as possible. So let's give them the flamethrower. This is our, our best marine unit. So let's give them the flamethrower. We're gonna give them the browning as well, and then increases all that. The flamethrower is really good against entrenched units and forts and stuff like that. Let's see what else we can get. We could get something for them. Um, let me just see if there's anything for any of these other units here. What do we have left? We got 63 points. I'd really like to improve, imp excuse me, improve their torpedoes. Plus, I'd give them three torpedoes. Yeah, that'd be super useful to have. Uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'll acquire that. Then only 33 points was a shame because I did want to get the additional ammunition for the artillery. We just don't have the points available so not gonna be able to do that so let's instead could improve the marine unit or we can improve the recon i think we will improve the recon unit with a browning m2 all right so that's all of our points guys so all we got left yeah we used every bit of prestige all right so what we're going to do is uh we're going to go ahead and listen to layton see what layton has to say about the upcoming battle and then we're going to start the battle of guadalcanal after the overwhelming defeat at midway the enemy is shunning major naval battles. Now, they plan to move from island to island, building frontline aircraft bases on each of them. I expect that the Navy will soon have to start the landing operations in order to kick the Japanese out of those islands. Adding more Marines to our forces will be crucial. Enter.
Greetings, Admiral. Holland McDyer Smith, General, Amphibious Corps, Pacific Fleet, United States Marine Corps, sir. That is how the man Smith. I know very well who you are. I'm all ears. Well, just one damned request, sir. I spent the last few years training the Marine 5th Amphibious Corps. Now that the war is going full steam ahead, I just can't sit in the training base like some lame old duck while my men are out fighting fearlessly on the front lines. Let me assume the personal command of the landing operations and fight along with the Marines I have trained. Your transfer would not be easy to organize, General. More directly to the point, would there not be some problems with the Critical Marines training program in your absence? Admiral, as a dedicated Marine, that was my first thought as well. So, I took care of all the necessary preparations, I can assure you. The training process is very well organized, and it will not suffer due to the transfer. Well... All right, General. I will honor your request. But in exchange, I expect I can count on your typically impeccable command of all our land and operations. <laughs> aye, aye, sir. I won't leave those Japanese bastards any more land than is needed for their graves. Of that, there will be no doubt. Well, you will soon have the opportunity to prove that, General Smith. Admiral Fletcher to Admiral Nimitz. Due to the threat of an air attack, I have ordered the carrier task force to retreat from the landing zone. The group of escort ships was tasked with covering the landing operation instead. Sir, we have just intercepted a radio exchange of Japanese forces northwest of Guadalcanal. It is closing in on our landing forces at full speed. Nimitz, what's going on? How could you allow Japanese ships to enter the landing site? The Sea Lark Channel is crammed with our transport ships, and the Japanese will sink them all. Fletcher's carrier force was supposed to cover the landing operation. Where is it? Fletcher relocated his task force due to a high risk of an enemy airstrike. Only escort ships were left to protect the landing site. I suppose his decision was made out of caution. Due to his caution, our Marines are now in a desperate situation. Listen up, Nimitz. Our carrier force has to get back and protect our landing as soon as possible. We will replace Fletcher with a more decisive officer. His replacement will be Vice Admiral William Halsey, also known as Bull Halsey. We need an assertive and a decisive commander, and Halsey has those traits in abundance. Complete landing operations as quickly as possible. By nightfall, ground forces must be deployed ashore. Transports with munition supplies for the ground forces will immediately set a course for the San Cristobal Island. Under the circumstances, unloading at Guadalcanal is impossible. Make sure they have full protection and support until they reach the port of Heru. The Marines of General Smith have to take control of the Henderson Field Airfield and other key locations. Mangakiki, Iruiru, Sukiki, Purakiki, Nguvia. It is also necessary to take back Tulagi Island from the Japanese. By capturing Guadalcanal, we gain an important base for liberating all of the Solomon Islands and ultimately seized the strategic initiative from the Japanese. Japanese High Command is aware of it 
and will surely send substantial reinforcements to deal with our ground forces. You must hold on to Guadalcanal no matter what. All right, so we're in the battle. Uh, Admiral Halsey, I, I really like. Uh, he's really interesting to, to read about. Uh, so yeah, he's going to be, I guess he's going to be our new uh, Admiral down here. Uh, but we just saw they took off with our, can we deploy carriers? Our world is full of wonders. Carriers are one of them. Oh, okay, yeah, so we can't deploy Ready carriers. Okay, so that's what it meant. So we can only deploy uh, our other ships. Okay, that's unfortunate. Uh, what did they what did they give us here? Oh, they did not give us much. What are all these? Oh, okay, these are allied units. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm really interested to see how they're going to how they're going to do this battle because uh, it was a not quite the traditional battle. Uh, so I'm curious to see what's going to happen here. Marines overall took uh, Guadalcanal fairly easily. There wasn't a ton of Japanese troops. There was mostly engineers there building this this air base here. So they, they took it pretty easily for the most part, uh, but then it just became a clusterfuck. Uh, they got left uh, because, uh, you know, historically we saw that, you know, we saw that event happen that kind of is based off of what happened historically. They, they, they left the Marines. Marines weren't supplied there for, for a little while, didn't have any, any food or water or ammunition uh, being brought to them, and they didn't have any backup. Now that was only a short-term uh, situation, but uh, this became, I think it's called Iron, Iron Bottom Sound is what they eventually called it because so many ships, both Japanese and American, were sunk here. A ton of ships were sunk, uh, and and it's just a really interesting. How are they going to like? How are they going to do the Tokyo Express? I'm really curious to see that how that happens. Which we won't talk about that yet. We'll talk about that if, if that ever happens in this this match. Uh, and yeah, the fact that. What both sides were doing was just pumping troops onto the island. They're just continually sending more and more troops uh, until eventually, uh, I think, when at their height, when the most like troops from from you know overall, where it was most equal, uh, it was like thirty thousand Japanese on this island and twenty nine thousand uh, Americans. Now, eventually, the Japanese started pulling back, and the Japanese er, and the Americans kept building up. I think they ended up getting like fifty thousand or something like that, uh, Marines and and uh, you know soldiers. On the island, but that was after the Japanese were already pulling off. Uh, but yeah, so I'm curious to see how it's going to go. We'll just have to see. Uh, but let's take a look and see what we have, guys. Uh, so for auxiliary units. Oh wait a minute, these aren't actually all auxiliary units, non cores. They gave us a few core units that we'll get to bring to other campaigns. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, they're giving us a Stuart. They did give us a recon units. They gave us an artillery. I mean, I'm glad that we got an extra artillery. I feel like that's worth it. But I don't know if I would have got a recon if I knew that we were getting that and two core marine units and then we also have two auxiliary marine units okay uh, and then we also have three destroyers but that's it uh two clemson and one fletcher class and those are located here all right so we need to go ahead and get all these guys upgraded uh so we're gonna start with the steward i'm just gonna level them up i mean uh so let's give them let's take a look see what the best thing to get them would be i think we should probably do the street fighter the street fighter one for them i think that'd be the most useful uh, for the other recon unit, probably going to give them the same thing that we gave the other recon, the Ford Observer. That'd be use again. That's just a really good, useful thing to have for the recon unit since they're always up front. For this artillery unit, let's see what do we want to get them. Uh, we can make them more deadly. Uh, I think that'd be nice to have. Uh, yeah, I think we might do the fire, or we could do the fire discipline for more ammunition. We'll do the deadly one. And then we with the marine units. What it takes. Uh, we're probably just going to do veteran trenches for all of these guys. I think that's a good starting one to get. It's pretty, it's fairly powerful to have. What we might end up doing, in fact, is having some of the auxiliary units getting a different upgrade, though. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll do a different upgrade for the auxiliary units. Like one get Night Hunter, and then the other one get. Let's take a look here. Uh, Swift Strike. Yeah. Okay, so that's all of our land units need to be leveled up. We have three destroyers that also need to be leveled up here. Uh, so let's take a look, see what we want to get them. So we could do like, um, just take a look and see what would be the best thing to get here. Move points, base of maneuvering, observant. All right, this is what we're going to do. Uh, so with the Fletcher class, where's that one at? It's right here. Uh, with the Fletcher class, we're going to have them get the scouting. With the Clemson class, we're going to have one of these guys get Night Hunter. And then the other one might want to get move points so they can get out of there quicker. Or we could even do Overwatch. 
What do Overwatch with this one? I don't know if they have an Air Force. I assume they should have an Air Force. Uh, you saw in the, the cutscene they had an Air Force. And that was why the carriers left. And then for this one, we will go ahead and do... what I think we'll do the, the Night Hunter. Okay. Alright, so let's go and get started, guys. So we need to protect all these uh, convoys here. Wow, there's a lot of convoys. Naval transport carries ground units. For units with heavy equipment or ground transports, embarkation and disembarkation into transport ships is only possible in seaports. Infantry can land in clear or shallows terrain. Naval transports are extremely vulnerable to all types of attacks. Try to escort them with warships and protect them from enemy shelling. All right, so we need to deploy our units first. That's the reason why I can't move anybody. Uh, so let's go and get our units deployed. So I saw that we can deploy here. Do we have to deploy our infantry this far away as well? No, we don't. Uh, okay, so we can deploy our land units and our infantry and stuff right along the beaches, in fact. Okay, so that's nice. We, and we actually only have four slots, and we happen to just get four. We have four units. Ready for so action. that worked out quite nicely. All right. Um, let's see here. How do we want to move them then? I guess we'll have uh, infantry. Well, we kind of want to keep them away from there. Uh, so I guess we'll have an infantry over here. Uh, an Free artillery over here as well. Uh, maybe have the scout now. unit over here somewhere and then the one marine corps unit right there all right where can the planes deploy they can't deploy anywhere over here yeah we don't have control of the airbase yet that makes sense uh maybe over here i assume they're only gonna be able to apply uh, uh only be able to come in with the aircraft carrier which means we won't be able to deploy them at all all right so let's go and get our units going um let's get the i don't remember which one of these is which i never remember this one's got the scouting and then this one has the overwatch okay uh, so we'll let's go ahead and get the one with the battle. scouting in the front. We'll have we'll the Colorado class here in the middle. The and I have the other Fletcher class right here. And then we're going to get the two submarines in here. All right, excellent. So again, we can't put the carriers, unfortunately. It's not really an option. So let's go ahead and end our deployment. It's the 7th at Akas, 1942, and this is the Battle of Guadalcanal. All right, so let's figure out and see how we want to do this. Uh, we need to take that unit out there. Let's see what else we got. Got a couple units here. Got units all up on the mountains there. Uh, we need to identify and see if they have any artillery or anti-aircraft that are going to be screening them. Although, I don't think we have any planes, guys. No, we don't have any planes at this moment. All right, let's see how the best way to do this. So we have this Constance recon unit here. extremely important in an offensive, since it provides you with full intelligence information regarding the presence of enemy forces, thus making your attack more effective. A reconnaissance unit can move several times per turn, as long as it has move points left. Once the reconnaissance unit notices the enemy, it automatically stops and then can move again. My Marines on Guadalcanal have only the ammunition they brought with them. It is not much. Where are our bloody supply ships? The, the operation did not go as planned. You need to forget about the supplies from transport ships, I'm afraid. Try to get everything you require by capturing the Japanese supply hub west of Henderson Field. Alright, so that's something we already talked about, the fact that we don't have any supplies. And uh, so that means we need to capture the supply hub right here. Okay, I just kind of moved the recon here to kind of uh, just identify them so we can see uh, the damage that we're going to do to them. So we need to take the airbase here. Uh, so that should probably be how we're going to begin here. We do have our overpowered artillery unit, so we're going to want to attack friend. with them. Uh, we could go ahead and move this unit here. Let's just attack first, and then we'll move them once I know like what how we're looking here. Uh, so we're going to bomb them. I think that'd be the the best first action here. We preach death since we've got to get that airbase under our control. So we'll start with that, uh, and then we could go ahead and attack with one of our democracy. infantry units. Let me just take a look. See, so they're the veteran in the trenches. Which one's this one? This one is also veteran trenches. So it doesn't yes, really matter. Sir. So I guess we'll start with attacking them. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Although, do we have a? Hmm. Said now. We might have them attack first and take the brunt of the damage. I think that's probably the best way to do that. In fact, let's go ahead and go here to identify the units that are here, or try to identify the units that are here. In fact. I guess we'll go right. We could also use a uh, little bit of aviation uh, recon as well to, to identify these guys. We'll go here. There any Your unit has been withdrawn from a supply zone. Okay, that's fine. So we can see that we have artillery here and an infantry unit. Okay, good to know. We need to know what's, what's that unit right there, though, still. We get bigger rations? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go and land these guys here. 
disembark them right there. What happened? We got oh we get attacked while disembarking. Interesting. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. So yeah, we're gonna open up the attack with them. Fire at will. Wait. Will is our Oh, and then of course yeah, they're gonna get hit by the artillery as well. That's fine. We'll let them take it. That's the point. They're the auxiliary unit. So weaken them quite a bit, then destroy them. Uh, but it looks like this infantry unit should be able to get the job Shoot done. Them. Shoot them. Get them. There we go. Alright, so that'll allow us to get the airbase. Yay, we got the there we go. My Marines have taken Henderson Airfield. Excellent. We can relocate our land based aviation there to support your troops. However, it is necessary to organize a solid defense for the airfield. The Japanese will certainly try to retake it. They can kiss my ass. My men did not take that airfield just to give it back. Looking forward to our Air Force's arrival. I hope it will properly shower the bloody chaps. Okay, <laughs> so shoot me, I want to go to the that hospital. actually gave us uh, planes. Nice, uh, they gave us two planes. Uh, they gave us a B-26 and a P-40. Okay, uh, well, let's go ahead and level them up. Altitude. Given that it's raining right now, we should probably give them uh, all weather. Yeah, well, let's do that because otherwise they're disguise. not going to be able to do anything. Or they won't be able to be very effective, I suppose. So let's give them all weather. We still need to find out what that is. Is that anti-air or is it just an infantry or is it artillery unit? I need to know what that is. Before we uh, attempt to attack anybody with this this uh, B-26 yet, I might have to. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to run the anti air. Excuse me, run the air reconnaissance now. In fact, uh, so let's go ahead and do that. You also notice we now have the airstrike ship. ability too. Uh, so what we'd want to do is do it where we identify uh, both of these units. Verifying the enemy's location. Oh, and it it was anti air. Oh uh, well, if I knew that, I would have did that, did that the opposite way. Damn it. I would have uh, identified that one first and then come over here and then we could have identified both of them. All right, well, at least we know what that is now. Uh, we still don't know what that one is. All right, so, damn. Artillery is the basis of the firepower of your forces. It can weaken enemy fortifications to allow your troops to attack without heavy losses. It is also good for defense as it provides fire support to the ground units within its range. However, its main strength is its long firing range, which allows you to destroy the enemy troops from afar. Remember though, all right, that's enough, Praetorian. We got it. Okay, I, I feel like we're going to have to use our first bombardment, uh, and that will allow us to hit both them and the artillery. Uh, and although I think it, it might try and shoot them down, but you know what we'll try and do? We'll, shoot, we'll do it this way and see if this is effective. I don't know. Oh, it's still going to provide support, but that's fine. They're not going to shoot them down in one, one shot. All right, so we did a little bit of damage to them. Also, uh, you notice that it did deplete some of their ammunition too. Uh, that's one of the most uh, useful things of that. So they can't really uh, do much now. They can the still defend against us though. All right, so I really want to take the artillery out, but obviously the, the uh, anti-air needs to be uh, removed from the equation first. Uh, do we have another artillery somewhere? Didn't they give us an artillery? So where's ours? Okay, so here's here's the uh, extra one they gave us. So let's go ahead and deploy these these units here. We're gonna get them deployed right here. They're ideal for rapid offensive and open terrain. However, they are vulnerable. In and then we're going to go ahead and move these guys in, so we can get them deployed. Although it looks like yeah, we can still move out of here. All right, so let's get Should them going forward. Nah, it's fine. Open this up for the artillery. And I'm going to attempt to use the artillery here uh, to fire. In fact, we can already fire on them and do substantial damage to that anti-air. Uh, or we can fire on the artillery. Okay, well, let's go ahead and have... Can this one move forward at all? It can move forward. And the tank can move as well. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the tank on the front line here against them. And then put the artillery behind them. So if they attack any of our units here, they will have to uh, deal with our artillery. And we'll go ahead and fire on the anti-air to start this out. Did quite a bit of damage to it. This, this anti-air, unfortunately, uh, can they move? No, they can't. The anti-air is not destroyed, and this artillery had already fired. Okay, so... I mean that's that's not too bad, guys. Uh, they're they're pretty damaged. Uh, so we could use them to just to attack them, but I think we're gonna use them to attack. I believe they've already fired. So 
I don't think we need to worry about them supporting them again. So let's instead attack the artillery so they don't uh, do a bunch of damage to us. Uh, we'll start this out by attacking the artillery. In a way. There we go. And then we the could use these high. guys to attack we them and maybe higher. even get them destroyed. It's an option. So we don't have to worry about them attacking any of our planes. Yeah, let's try and do this. And then what we could do is do... Well, they don't really have anything. We could do the afterburner here. I love putting the enemy butt on All right, so this should be destroyed. Was there we go. Target? And we're, we're going to keep the fighter here and instead uh, move the tactical bomber closer uh, so they can cover them because I don't know if there's any more anti-air over here. There's a lot of units, so there could be. So the artillery is not yet destroyed, but we should be able to take them out with uh, this guy here, the recon unit. He's sluggish, so he has no chance. All right, excellent. So we did win there. Do we have to squeeze the orders out we'll go ahead and push forward on the mountain here and try and go up around this. Uh, is there any? We still need to take them out, but not very good odds. Uh, so we're going to wait until we can get some artillery fire on them. Uh, and then we can move these guys forward as well. Uh, we have this infantry here. I think we should probably move uh, this guy. Let me just take a look here. Let's move these guys forward. All right, uh, so that is all the land units, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. So let's go in and get our naval units moved over. Uh, so we're going to use our we'll open this up with our destroyer. Uh, let's go ahead and get them moving forward. We're going to have to use sonar again because I expect there to be enemy submarines, uh, just based on history. Let's go and move these guys. Make sure that we have a destroyer up close to them to provide uh, any coverage. And then let's get the submarines moving. So let's take a look and see what these guys are. So this is a night hunter here. And this is the forward observer. Okay, this one's the forward observer, I believe. Yeah, this one is. So we want to move wow, them in front of our fleet. It is so All these guys are going to move. Can we attack? I mean, I guess this is where the action is. I don't know if there's going to be anything over here that we need to be concerned about. Let's just go this are way. All right, so I think that's all the sh all of our core ships. And so now all that we have left is the auxiliary destroyers, which we have three of those. Oh, and there's another unit here. We should probably have them deploy here. Uh, yeah, I think feel like we have enough troops down there. So let's have them deploy here. So we're going to have to have a cut there. So uh, there's snow all on the ground. It's been snowing here in Colorado Springs for what three or four days now. And so there's a lot of snow on the ground, and uh, so I've got the uh, you got the snow plows just going by, just constantly. It's pretty loud. Uh, let's go and deploy these guys here. Uh, and damn, I wish we could have moved into the forest. That would have been helpful, but it looks like we don't have enough move points. I right, so we'll just move here. Should we speed up? It's fine. Nah, it's fine. Uh, we don't have control of these ones. I think these are the ones that need to be escorted to here. Yeah, over to there. So these are the ones the destroyers have to protect. Only three of them have to survive. There's five of them, but you know what? These ships here are going to be able to just wreck them if they so desire. What do they have here? Oh, is that a... That looks like a... Looks like a heavy cruiser to me. We can't see it. I think that's a heavy cruiser. And then we have... These are all destroyers. So a total of uh, one, two, three, four destroyers and one heavy cruiser against our three destroyers okay <laughs> seems like very fairly uh even odds here uh so what we need to do is try and work on getting one destroyer like completely destroyed uh so we're not going to use our torpedoes against them obviously wouldn't it be best way to do this uh, so this is the night hunter where's my scouting one that's the scouting one uh so we're going to open up the attack with them they're going to shoot a torpedo at us which means they won't hit us more than likely. I hate how that's how how it goes, that the, the Shrey always uses the torpedo when it's close. So we'll open the attack up with the torpedo with this guy, and then we're going to then attempt to attack them with this gun, with this guy. And I'm going to try and get these this unit here destroyed, if at all possible. Your trust. And then what we're going to do is make sure that we we stay here where they can fire on us. Is this the one we want them to fire on? That's the one with the Overwatch. Sh 
sure. So we'll put them here. Seeking out the enemy. In the front. They won't escape. Oh, and we fired our torpedoes. Okay, we actually did some damage there. We are the could we do some damage with these torpedoes? We could. All right, we'll do that then. Escort ships are the and then just try and uh, get them destroyed. The Looks like we're pretty damn close. Yeah, I think we're gonna get the kill here. Excellent. Uh, so let's go and fire. And there we go. Lovely. All right, so this one we're gonna try and keep alive. Let's go ahead and pull them back over to here. Uh, we should also use a little bit of sonar over there as well. So let's go ahead and have them pull all over here. Well, these ones here are gonna be our. Uh, this is probably gonna be the dummy one, in fact, that we'll leave here for them to them to destroy, and hopefully that will save their life. Maybe we'll just move them one forward. Let's use the sonar here, though. On the lookout. One there, and yeah, we'll use sonar here. Reporting as you use it every turn, so might as well. All right, is that everybody? Has everybody moved? Uh, and everybody fired and all that good Send stuff? I think so. Um, yeah, I believe we're I believe we're done. I'm not mistaken trap. here. I really hope they don't come over here with their, their big ships and destroy our artillery. That'd be frustrating. Yeah, I think that's it, guys. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and end our turn and see what the AI does. Now, we do have the air base. That's what's important. All right, so they're going to attack that one. I hope they spread it out so they don't destroy them, but frankly, I'd prefer that they attack them. See, I just hate how they use the torpedoes. It's a free attack. Now, we get to use that same tactic as well, and yeah, here comes the damn heavy cruiser probably going to fire on our land units, which it saves these guys, but it might just end up destroying our core units, which is obviously not a good thing. Oh, never mind. It's not saving nothing. They're spreading their attack out, though, instead of destroying units. Yeah, I really hope we're able to save these guys. Yeah, they're just... They're spreading it out. But they're not attacking the destroyers. That's interesting. How many are there? There's five, right? And if they kill if they kill three of them, then we, we fail that objective. Which there's well no, they're still alive. There's one destroyed. There's two destroyed. There's three destroyed. How do you save them? Yeah, why did they yeah, they just didn't fight the destroyers like at all. It's interesting. All right, and that's our artillery providing support as the infantry attacked those tanks. And then the other artillery providing support as this infantry attacked maybe our recon? Yeah, attacked our recon unit. All right, so now they're attacking the destroyer. It's irrelevant anyway, we failed the objective. I don't know how you're supposed to complete that, man. Maybe if we didn't move our destroyers so much, maybe if we would have kept them, but they didn't, yeah, they just didn't focus their fire on the destroyers, like, at all. So that's unfortunate. We're, that means I don't think we can get the full absolute victory now, and that's kind of sucks, but it is what it is. It kind of feels like something that's kind of out of your control. I am Admiral William Halsey, and by order of the Commander-in-Chief of U.S. Fleet Operations, I am now under your command and reporting for duty. I await your orders, sir, but if you ask me, I will tell you. Kill Japs. Kill Japs. Kill more Japs. Great. Immediately send our carrier forces into the battle. Our grand forces on Guadalcanal are in desperate need of the support of our air force. Aye, sir. Rest assured, the moment enemy fleet tries to poke at Guadalcanal, I will turn it into the biggest Japanese ship graveyard the world has ever seen. Sir. The bad weather conditions in Guadalcanal area are unchanged, and we do not expect good weather soon. Mark my words, no matter what the weather is, I will find a way to deal with bloody chaps by all odds. Mobile airfield at your disposal. All right, so there's Admiral Halsey. Uh, so we have an island on board, sir. He gave us a. We got a carrier, uh, and that carrier is stocked with two fighters, a Dauntless and Avenger. Okay, torpedo and dive bomber, uh, and we also got another destroyer. Okay, awesome. Uh, so we need to go ahead and get these guys upgraded. So we'll start this out. We'll get this history upgraded uh, and probably give them... Let me just take a look here, see what we want to give them. Uh, there's the spawning range, which is always nice to have. Night Hunter. I think we're going to do another another on the scouting, I think. I really like having that. Mobile airfield and then the disposal. carrier is going to get the overwatch. 
Oh, we should do the task force. Damn it. All right, it was too late. <laughs> so now we have all the uh, the planes. We have the fighters. And given they said it's going to rain this entire time, I almost feel like the best option here would be to get just get all weather. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know why we'd want to do anything else at this point because we're just going to have if we have rain the entire entire uh, scenario. So we're going to get all weather likely for all of them, so that I don't have any I don't have these problems here. Well, yeah, I guess it just kind of sucks because. I really, really like that tattoo retreat, man. It's like super helpful uh, to have. Harmony in the skies. I mean, it's, yeah, it's just so helpful to have uh, where they can back up. But it's fine. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get started with the turn, man. Oh, I bet we can deploy our. Uh, we'll yeah, we can. I, I, well, I guess this lit up last time. Uh, so which one of these is which? That's the Overwatch. Oh, well, they, okay, they're both Overwatch, but this one has more skills. Uh, so let's go ahead and place this one in the front. This one right here in the back. And then we can also go ahead and place our planes now. Uh, so let's get a, a Wildcat on each of them. On each of them, excuse me. Our lives are in the skies. Uh, a Dauntless on, are these the same? It's the All Weather Dauntless. And that's the Tactical Retreat Dauntless. And then the Avenger can go on that one, I guess. All right, so let's go into deployment. And get all those planes onto the carriers. And see so what we can do here. It does suck that that ended up happening that way, uh, but we did completely destroy one of the destroyers uh, last one, and then I think we should be able to do another one. Uh, let me see if, if these guys can move forward at all, the yeah, battleship, oh, in a way that allows him to attack. I don't think so, guys. Two, one, two, three, four, five. So yeah, there's not gonna be any attacking from any of these ships for right now. They're gonna be out of the fight for at least a little while longer. All right, so what we'll do, as let's have one of these destroyers. Air cover. Your trust is well Just trying to see which one's which here. Uh, so this is the one with the scouting. And this is the one with the overwatch. Okay. Uh, so let's have this guy here. Be the one that moves forward. Or we could use our submarines, in fact, for that scouting purposes. We'll have this one move forward here. Are we on a scouting mission? Do some sonar. Nothing around here. Okay. Just kind of cover this for us uh, as our our capital ships move through here. All right, so let me see where the battleship can move because remember the battleships do not have as much move points. So move the battleships first, and then that way we'll put the destroyer in the front. Hit some sonar there, and then we're going to use these submarines as kind of like scouts. Kind of scout ahead. All right, then we have our carriers that are coming along here. Carriers are one of them. We're always on time. And we go against they're all the going to be kind of bunched up for a minute, mission. for a little while. And then we'll try and spread them out a little bit. All right, so that's those plane, or excuse me, those ships which aren't going to be able to engage in the battle much. So let's see if we can't uh, try and get some damage done on these, these destroyers here. Uh, well, you know, we're going to start with the land uh, situation, and I do not like having that heavy cruiser next to our... Our, uh, our land units. We need to get to pushing forward as quickly as possible here. Uh, so let's see how we want to do this. We're just, we need to take the supply. Uh, we also need to attack right there. Uh, what I think we'll do uh, is open up with the bomber attacking right here. If the infantry is the heart of the armed forces, the air force is their soul. All right, so yeah, no hurry at all. Just bomber attacks and then the fighter. It is the United States Air Force, you stupid. And then we're going to try and move them away from those essence. units there. Although I don't really know if these are anti-air. They could very well be. We will soften up the enemy ranks. Interesting. Artillery cannot fire on any of these units. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and start with... Uh, let's see. Here, could they attack? They could attack. And then that would allow us to... Although we'd have to get over here in order to get a line of sight, it seems. All right. But that's fine. We're just going to attack right here then. We will hit them before they know it. And didn't quite destroy them. It's okay. I'm going to go ahead and hit them with the, the infantry unit. 
There we go. Kill these guys? Oops, we did. So you are the commander, huh? And then let's just go and start moving forward. Supply hub. Now they have the supplies necessary to keep fighting for this goddamn island. Is there any speed limit here? See who that is. It's the infantry unit. Okay, he might attack us. So let's try and get our artillery moved as far forward as I can get him. It doesn't look like that's very far. <laughs> so we'll go right here. Uh, can they attack from here? They might be able to. Uh, no, no. Well, the mountain's going to block them. Just trying to get the artillery away. From what I've noticed in the past game is the uh, ships often tend to focus on your artillery. And in fact, this artillery unit doesn't have any supply. Uh, so they have no ammunition. They used it all. All right, well, that's a damn shame. Yes, sir. All right, so this unit's going to have to start the attack here more than likely. My dog. Yeah. Where Recon unit can, can go ahead and push forward here, identify all these units in the back right here for us. Uh, I don't think I want to push that far forward. Let's just go here. Flush. I don't want to get them all too. vulnerable. Uh, I miss my dog. And yeah, let's just go ahead and do the attack here. Morons. Looks like that didn't go all that well. Yours are brilliant. Could attack there, but yeah, not going to have At great the odds there. Could go ahead and have the tank instead come over this way. We only have one tank. Remember that, guys. I want to get the no artillery moved, to, unit moved as far away from them as possible. So let's go here. Yes, sir. And I imagine we're probably not going to be able to defend very well there. Uh, there's close quarters. Let me just try to see here. Units in swamp receive a negative four penalty to attack and defense parameters. So essentially, you don't want to move to the swamp. <laughs> I wonder why. Okay, um, let's Where move over going? here. Have you seen the Statue of Liberty? And have this it's guy huge. move here. I'm just trying to push forward. And I'm trying to get away from these units takes. here. Then we'll leave that guy there. We are tough enough. Uh, hopefully they don't attack him. Uh, and then we'll have. Yeah, that that we're just gonna leave that unit right there for now. We move fast, very fast. Oh, he can attack here. Oh, do tanks have range now? Yeah. Tanks have gun range now. Okay, they didn't before in uh, Panzer, Panzer strategy. Well, if we wanted to attack them, then we'd want to identify them first. I don't really want to use, I guess we could use a command point for that. I don't think we have anybody else to attack, so right? The commander, huh? Yeah, there's nobody else really to attack along here. Just let us know the I suppose there's no reason not to, to use it. Yo -ho -ho and a bottle of rum. Use the aviation recon to identify what's here. It'd be good to know what's here any damn way. And you know what, we'd want to do it like this. So if there's any units back here, we'd see them as well. It's an infantry unit. Okay. So let's attack them. Maybe get some of their entrenchment down. Yeah, it looks like we knocked out some of their entrenchment. All right. Um, so who's left to move? Oh, we have this unit here. And we're just going to seize the air base. The airfield there. Looks like there's some unit there. We can't see them yet. Yes, sir. And... Let's start with the destroyers now, guys. So we're gonna try and take this destroyer out. That's the goal here. Try and get these guys destroyed. They won't escape. So they'll shoot their torpedoes. That's absolutely fine. Uh, and it does look like. Hmm. Okay. Let's go ahead and fire again. This one's gonna be kind of the weak one. It'll be the one we'll probably leave here to get destroyed. And then I'm gonna see if I can't launch a torpedo on them. Doesn't look like that's going to be effective. Oh, yes, and they can still fire on us, so we're actually going to want to wait to use that. All right, let's go ahead and fire on them. Then we, we actually have worse odds against them than they do against us. Okay, interesting. Providing air cover. We can move forward a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I don't want to get all my destroyers sunk. Uh, we could instead fire on them, though we can't see, see them. So they won't do as much damage on them. Hmm. We might want to go ahead and move forward then. Reporting All right, so let's, let's start out the attack here. Again, we're just going to try and get the destroyer sunk. And they can't fire back on us now. And so now we're going to open up with the torpedoes. I know that they're probably not going to hit them. Probably not going to do any damage. But we'll try anyway. You never know, might get a little bit lucky. And they got lucky and got that shell hole on them. All right, so let's go and move this one out of there. On the lookout. We're gonna move this one as well, though obviously not as far. It's fine. And then this one's gonna move forward just a little bit, just enough to, to hit them. 
seeking out the enemy. Remember the US masters. And I don't think we'll be able to sink them. Yeah, unfortunately can't. Alright, we could go ahead and use our sonar here. And there's no real reason not to. Reporting as ordered. Alright, so didn't locate anybody. Well, at least we have an insane. And I think we used yeah, we used all our sonar there. So is there anything left to do? I don't think so, guys. I think everybody's moved. Yeah, this guy can actually move back. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I just wanted to fire on him anyway. Are we on a scout? Move over here then. We are the fastest. Alright, so he's sticking there, he's staying there. We know what to do. And he's staying there. Ready for action. Yeah, I think we're pretty much good. Yes, I don't think any of these are units that we actually want to move here. Oh, uh, we have our planes. I suppose we could use those. Yeah, I didn't even think we about the fact that we haven't used our planes yet. Who could we bomb? Uh, so our these are the Wildcats. Let's take a look at our Dauntless Bombers and see if any of them can reach. They could reach here and uh, bomb these units right here. Hmm. We'd have to identify them first, though. We do make enough command points where we can go ahead and make use of this recon, so might as well. Let's go ahead and have them go this way. And we spotted a submarine. That was that ability that we just got there, guys. Damn, we don't have the ability to attack them, though. Shit, we're like one distance too far. Yeah, if we were just a little bit close, one hex closer, we'd be able to attack that submarine. What we can do is bomb them, though, with anybody who has uh, the the weather uh, benefit. Uh, so let's just take a look at what we got here uh, as far as our bombers go. So we have our Dauntless, which has all weather. Uh, so that's one Dauntless that we have available. This Dauntless should also have all weather, yep. So we have that Dauntless as well. And then we have this Dauntless, which is the tactical retreat, meaning that they probably don't have much of a... Naval attack. In fact, it's not bad. Now yeah, the rain's not that big of a penalty. Okay, so yeah, we should be able to attack them uh, with the Avengers. You can see the world's harmony. So I think that's skies. exactly what we'll do because I don't think they can reach. No, they can't reach. So yeah, we'll attack them with the uh, the Avengers then. That's how we'll try and take these guys out. Uh, so we'll move like one right here, yeah, no hurry at all. Just over and one right here. An and then just attempt to uh, some guys. sink this submarine and do as much damage as we can anyway. Underground, everything's All right, so we're gonna leave them where they're at for right now, uh, and then we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and bomb. I think with the the dauntless if bombers. The the of the I don't think forces, there's anything we can reach here. Uh, oh, never mind. They can reach that infantry. All right, so we're gonna have that dauntless go after we'll the infantry then. The best. So you they'll move here. Uh, the bomb them bombs. Soothing in and way. then the other dauntless bombers are, are going to bomb this guy there's nobody there so yeah we'll just work on uh weakening this guy as much as possible we're teaching them statistics forcefully and then we're gonna want these guys positioned where a fighter could come over you here and cover them all harmony in the skies. Uh, no hurry at all. And then bomb them. So hopefully these guys will be fairly weakened by the time we get here. Alright, so the best way to do this would be to... Let me uh, see here. No I think this guy has the movement. Yeah, he can go right there. Up. We still need two fighters, essentially. Yeah, we're still going to need two fighters over here. So let's see which wildcat can cover them. We have four wildcats. One needs to cover here, while two will be covering over here. Uh, so we'll probably want an auxiliary wildcat uh, to cover that one right there. At this Can he reach all the way over here? Let's just take a look. Everything's so hectic. Let's see if any of these wildcats can get all the way over here. Looks like they both can. All right, so let's just take a look at their bonuses. I think they both have the all-weather, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they both have the all-weather. And I think they're both on the same carriers. Yeah, so it's irrelevant which one we use. Let's just go ahead and use this one. We will teach them manners. All right, uh, and then we're going to want fighters over here as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and take we live our fighters. Fly. Have this one but attack here. Them down. And then move to cover Consider these guys. Already there. And then the <laughs> other non-core fighter. Uh, these guys just cannot they did a lot of damage place. to him. And I think that's going to be it. We have one wildcat left, but we'll just keep them uh, on the carrier for right now. 
This looks pretty solid. I think that's going to be the end of our turn, if I'm not mistaken. I think we moved yeah, everybody. Uh, so yeah, this is the end of the turn. We'll let the AI get their movement in. And then I think uh, that well, might be the end of the episode. I guess it depends on how long it takes the AI to go. So they did attack across the mountains. They attacked that artillery unit. That's a shame. Um, the heavy carrier, excuse me, heavy cruiser did move to go and attack one of the destroyers, which I'm actually fine with. I want them to leave my land units alone. It does look like they're really focusing fire on that destroyer, which is what I left them there for. And they are attacking an artillery unit. <laughs> Shit. They always do. Um, yeah, they're both attacking artillery units. Luckily, they both attacked different artillery units, but all it takes is that one right there to destroy one of them. He didn't destroy him. He demoralized him. All right. I think he's going to survive. <laughs> just barely. Yeah, I think we just barely kept that artillery, just because he got demoralized rather than destroyed. And I think this should end up resulting in them sinking that destroyer. Oh, there's a... Oh, what, what the hell happened over here? Okay, I think that's an enemy submarine that's right underneath our destroyer, and we happened to locate him because he attacked right there. Uh, we're only going to get one of these guys out of there. Wow. The Navy was a great help to me at Port Moresby, and I would like to return the favor. I have sent my soldiers to help you out. I assume you will ensure the safe passage of my troops until they land at Guadalcanal. Thank you, MacArthur. Your men are badly needed. We will provide our best escort for your transport ships to Honiara and give them safe passage. Sir, we have spotted the arrival of the enemy submarines to the operation area, and it's likely to be only the beginning. The Japanese will keep increasing the presence of their submarine forces close to Guadalcanal. Admiral Halsey, make sure our destroyers patrol the waters near MacArthur transport ships to prevent the threat of the enemy submarines attack. I used to serve as a submarine captain and know perfectly well what those steel sharks are capable of. Do not underestimate such a threat. Aye aye, Admiral. If we see those sneaky sons of bitches, we will assign them to scrutinize the ocean floor in no time. Our group of transport ships is taking heavy losses. Bloody samurai. Right, yeah, we did fail this objective, unfortunately. There's only the one left, so yeah, we're not going to complete that. There's this submarine here, um, and they are right underneath this destroyer, so we should be able to uh, hopefully sink them. Um, so let's go ahead and open it up with the depth charges here. Fire all guns. They're like right underneath us. And Fire away. try and get these guys here killed also use the torpedo against them although I'm tempted to use it over here against them uh, this destroyer needs to get the hell out of there uh, but what we'll do is we'll open up the attack well you know what that might not be necessary let's so it's nighttime and it's raining okay so basically we can't see shit yeah that's uh that's pretty bad where'd that submarine go is, is that the submarine up there is there a whole nother submarine here I have no idea but we need to come over here and escort them uh, we also have our carriers escorting up here. Frankly, we're in a kind of crappy situation. Uh, this artillery just Locked barely in, survived. Uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and probably restore them. Uh, HQ skills, so get them the reinforcements. Let's say we can only do... Put them up by three. Why is that? I wonder why we can only do three. Just is they're just so damaged or whatever? I actually know. We will bury the enemy in its trenches. Uh, but yeah, we can't attack anybody here. What we'll want to do is get them going like behind, probably. Mm, no, then they won't be able to restore themselves. So they'll have to do it here. All right, well, three is better than nothing, though. If they die, then I guess it's irrelevant. We need to get this unit here destroyed. Uh, so we'll probably have to focus our planes fire on guys. them. Although we actually we currently have, have a fighter over them right now. We were born. All right, just taking a look here. It does look like, yeah, we're getting quite the penalty here because of the night. Let's go ahead and open the attack against them. Gotta do it, boys. With blinding speed. And then try and bomb them. Begin to see the beauty of falling bombs. Yeah, this is just not very effective. All right, well, we have another unit here. 
And we're gonna need to move them into the supply. We stand for democracy. And could attack, but it wouldn't have very good odds. Uh, this guy doesn't have great odds of winning either. Recon's coming up behind him. Uh, I think moving here, I don't know if that would cut off their supply or whatever, but we could attack from behind if we wanted to. And we have decent odds here, uh, much better than we did with the other recon unit. So we'll go and attack them. Now we got better odds. I think we're gonna have to attack these guys. Pretty worried about the situation here with the artillery unit. That sucks that we didn't win there. All right, what options do we have here? Can we attack with this guy? We could, but then we won't be able to destroy them. However, this guy could take care of that, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. But there is no one less. Let's get them destroyed. We are and then with this unit, we're just gonna have to attack up here against them. Always on the front lines. Not Maybe great. Give us some command. I think they're surrounded. We I'm not really sure how that's considered, but up a trap. we're running low on explosives. Come on. The trap is gone. Didn't do any damage. Damn it. All right. Not good there. Uh, we still have the situation here. Uh, this, these guys will likely be destroyed by the time we get them uh, get over there. Uh, we can probably get that submarine destroyed here. Uh, we need to identify that ship. I'm trying to see what all needs to be identified. We still need to find where that one submarine over here went. Uh, that's been. Yeah, I think it's just here. So what we'll do? We could also throw the battleships uh, plane out there as well. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and have them. Trying to figure out where the hell the uh verifying the enemy's location. There he is right there. So could we do battle with him? With our main gun. Let's take a look. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, there's no way. So we can't do battle with them. Uh can't we do you should be able to fight him though, you'd think, with our battleship? Let's see. One so one, two, three, four, five, six. No, we can't even attack with the battleship here. We can't attack him though. All right, interesting. Yeah, we just don't have the ability to attack yet. Could also help out there. All right, so that's kind of a shame. I was really hoping that we could start getting some fire on these uh, ships here, but yeah, it doesn't look like that's gonna be an option. All right, we'll just go ahead and have a move uh, just where he'll be able to fire on him. One, two, three, wait, one, two, three, four, five. So right here is probably good. Yeah, we're like just, just short of them to attack. All right, well, let's go and attack him then. We're not gonna be able to finish this turn in this episode, unfortunately, we just don't have the time. Uh, so yeah, we'll open it up with that. I needed to know where he was going. Uh, let's go ahead and get the submarines going over here, though it is kind of risky since there's still destroyers here. So what we might want to do is have him go here. there be enemy cargo ships? And then have this submarine, we'll have him go up around the side here. All around Tulagi. Guarding the perimeter. All right, um, so we have that, holds the Navy together. that submarine that we still have to get dealt with. Are the glue that holds we still have this guy together. here that needs to be dealt with. So what we might do is move in close with this destroyer. Conducting active search for enemy subs. And then fire away. let him fire his torpedo at us. We fight. Fire on him with those. And then this guy's gonna come in here and help. Um, first, he's gonna open up with the torpedo. I should have had him fire his uh, uh, depth charges, but yeah, I wasn't thinking. Uh, but we have other destroyers. Hopefully, somebody will get it done. Firing as we go. Oh shit! That ended up him moving, didn't it? All right, that's fine. He's got the scouting trait, so. All right, so it did hit. Excellent. Uh, so we're gonna want one, two, three, like four. It's right here. So that we can subs. fire on him. Keep firing. And he didn't do any damage against us. All right, and then that means he should be able to imp uh, fire with impunity. He can't fire back on us. So even though he has barely any health. And then we'll even fire the torpedoes at him. Although we could have used that torpedo on him. Uh, we're going to bring him over here. And we'll drop those if we need to. Let's use the torpedo here. Probably not going to do any damage, but we'll try. He's in a terrible position right now. Do we get All right, and then we can bring our destroyers in, which I'm gonna bring this one right here, try and get that submarine destroyed. 
Uh, we could also move here so that we can fire on them. And I suppose that's what we'll do. Are we on a scouting mission? Try and get them destroyed. As we go. With our core unit here. We will teach All right, so we have destroyed the destroyer there. Now let's go ahead and see if slot. we can't get this guy sunk. Fire away. All right, um, maybe. It's hard to say. Ah, damn. I was hoping this would work a little bit different than it did. I was trying to get the kill with him, but I don't think that's going to be possible. Uh, we might have to get the kill with him. Let's try, though. Take them out. No. All right, so he's going to have to get the kill, which kind of sucks because yeah, he gets that extra experience and he's about to die. Um, he might not even get the kill, actually. Continue the onslaught. All right, there we go. Excellent. So that submarine has been dealt with. I don't think that was this submarine over here, guys. I really don't think that was it. Yeah, didn't locate them there. Let's go ahead and move them over here. And then have them uh, cover these guys. In case the submarine decides to come down here. I don't know if he can even locate them or see them or whatever. All right, so let's go ahead and get our carriers moved. We have an island on board, sir. They're not very well screened, so let's go ahead and have them kind of stay away from where we know there's a submarine Mobile floating around somewhere. At your disposal. We reach for the stars. This one we might just keep right here for right now until I figure out where the hell that guy is. Yes, sir. Oh, he provides us that holds the Navy screening together. here. All right, that is what it is. I think. That's all we're going to be doing in this episode, guys. Uh, we still have, I know we still have some units left to move. Uh, we still have, uh, you know, land units that are that need to move. We need to attack right here. Uh, we got all our planes that can move as well. Uh, so we'll be doing that in the following episode. Hope you guys are enjoying it so far. Uh, so it looks like we've almost got it, like, in the bag pretty much. Because, I mean, uh, there's only a few more units left. I mean, this one here is going to be easy to destroy. And then when we get here, it's only one unit. Uh, should be easy probably one unit right there as well and then of course you got to take this too uh, but as i said before t the taking of guadalcanal wasn't the hard part then you had to hold it so i assume uh, given that there's 19 turns left and we almost have the island and there's going to be a lot of secondary objectives uh, for instance we have to take Tulagi as well which we've already taken that one point might send us over here to take some of these other japanese islands here the ones that they control so might be tasked to take those, uh, and then I assume they're going to start sending reinforcements. Uh, there should be like lots of reinforcements coming, and then maybe we'll have like an objective to like get them sunk before they land or whatever. And uh, I don't know. I, I want to see how they represent the Tokyo Express as well, uh, where the Japanese were coming at night and uh, just pumping troops. Uh, they were sending them, you know, both in transport ships but also in destroyers. They'd put them on destroyers and, and have them land. Uh, have the destroyers bring them in just because they're a little bit more durable and, and they're fast uh, as well and uh, yeah that just at nighttime the Japanese are just coming through here because uh, they were just way better uh, and when it comes to night fighting and just controlling their ships at night it was uh, definitely a, a Japanese advantage over the Americans and just uh, pumping troops every night they brought more and more troops onto the island so yeah I would expect uh, they represent that somehow uh, so it's gonna be something that we're gonna have to stop or whatever. I don't know. It's gonna be interesting to see how they represent it uh, This is not it and it's not just sink these guys and, and take the island and then we're gonna be done uh, I, I have a feeling we're gonna have a lot of other objectives that we need to uh, complete here uh, But as of right now we've taken three of the eight points for Guadalcanal and uh, Tulagi, uh, so we still have to get five more points one two three four five here uh, so I'm looking forward to continuing this battle. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode as well. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Do read and reply to all comments. Love talking to you guys. Uh, if you're looking for any uh, other videos to watch while you wait for, for this series, since I don't always have a video every day for this one, uh, go check on the front page of our channel, and you'll find... 2000 something videos all sorted by genres so you'll be able to find something that you enjoy watching We've got a lot of strategy content if that's what you're into uh, also if you're looking for any links check down in the description of any of our videos you'll find links to our uh, discord channel if you'd like to join our community to our twitter and facebook if you'd like to follow us uh, anywhere on social media 
as well as to our PayPal and Patreon if you'd like to help support the channel. All right, guys, so I will see you on the next episode, episode two for the Battle of Guadalcanal. Thanks for watching, guys.